A Silent Invader For decades, the Florida Everglades have been under siege. It's a slow-motion apocalypse. An apex predator, the Burmese python, has effectively erased the native wildlife of one of the world's most unique ecosystems. But in 2025, the state of Florida decided to fight fire with high-tech silicon. Scientists introduced the Robo Bunny, a masterpiece of biomimicry. It looked like a marsh rabbit, smelled like a rabbit, and even twitched like a rabbit. It was supposed to be the ultimate weapon to lure the silent killers out of the grass. But when the first field reports came back, they didn't just contain data on pythons. They contained something chilling. The robots had opened a door to a new kind of biological nightmare. Why did we need robots? Because humans are losing. Despite thousands of professional hunters and millions of dollars in bounties, the python population is estimated to be over 300,000. These snakes are invisible. A 15-foot python can hide in 6 inches of grass. Dogs can't track them easily in the heat. Infrared cameras fail because the snakes are cold-blooded and match the ambient temperature. The RoboBunny was designed to solve this by using active thermal emitters. It created a heat signature that screamed "Eat ME to a python's pit organs. But as it turns out, pythons aren't the only ones listening to that signal. These aren't just toys. Each unit costs between $3,000 and $5,000. They are equipped with solar panels to recharge during the day, 360-degree cameras to record the strike, and AI chips that can distinguish between a playful nudge from a raccoon and the lethal strike of a snake. They even secrete a synthetic musk that mimics the scent of a distressed rabbit. The engineering team from the University of Florida worked for three years to perfect the twitch, a specific Mechanical movement that triggers a python's predatory instinct. It was the perfect trap. Or so they thought. When the researchers recovered the memory cards from the first batch of deployed robots, they saw something they couldn't explain. The snakes attacking the robots were larger, faster, and more aggressive than any Burmese python on record. DNA samples from the robots, fur, revealed the truth. The robots had attracted a massive population of hybrid, super pythons. These are a cross between the Burmese python and the Indian rock python. The Indian rock python is known for its legendary aggression and speed. By concentrating these snakes in one area using the robots, Scientists discovered that the invasion was evolving into a deadlier strain right under their noses. But the hybrids were just the beginning. The robots began attracting creatures that didn't belong in Florida at all. The Nile Monitor, a six-foot-long lizard with razor-sharp teeth, began scavenging the robo-bunnies. Even worse, sightings of the African rock python, a snake known to hunt humans in its native land, increased tenfold near the robot sites. The scent and heat signals were acting like a dinner bell for every invasive monster in North America. Instead of catching one species, we were unintentionally feeding and concentrating a legion of invasives that threatened to spill out of the Everglades and into suburban backyards. The robots started to change the behavior of native animals too. Florida panthers, one of the rarest cats on earth, were caught on camera stalking the robots. Every time a panther attacked a robot, it risked breaking its teeth on the internal steel frame or being conditioned to hunt mechanical objects instead of real prey. 
We were polluting the natural instincts of the very animals we were trying to save. The cyber swamp was no longer a laboratory. It was a battlefield where the lines between biology and machinery were becoming dangerously blurred. The Florida Everglades is the harshest testing ground on Earth. 100% humidity, corrosive salt air, and thick, acidic mud. Soon, the robo-bunnies began to malfunction. But these weren't just simple hardware failures. The AI began to process data in unpredictable ways. Some robots stayed in distress mode for 24 hours straight, creating a sonic frequency that drove native birds away while attracting every predator for miles. We didn't just bring robots to the swamp, we brought a chaotic, malfunctioning signal that shattered the natural silence of the glades. It wasn't just the animals reacting to the robots. Local hunters, who have spent their lives in these swamps, began to protest. They saw the $5,000 robots as a waste of taxpayer money and a threat to their way of life. Some even claimed the robots were baiting pythons closer to human settlements. You can't replace a human eye and a hunting dog with a circuit board, they argued. The tension between traditional survivalism and modern technocracy reached a boiling point as rogue hunters began kidnapping the robots to prove they were ineffective. The numbers don't lie. In the first year, the Robo Bunny project cost nearly $2 million, but directly led to the capture of only 42 pythons. That's nearly $47,000 per snake. Critics called it a technological vanity project. However, the scientists defended it. They argued that the data gathered, the thermal maps, the hybrid sightings, and the predatory patterns, was worth more than the snakes themselves. We were mapping the invisible invasion, but at what cost? Is it a scientific breakthrough, or just an expensive toy in a losing war? Despite the failures, Florida isn't backing down. They are now developing version 2.0. These aren't just isolated rabbits, they are a swarm. Interconnected drones in the air and robotic lures on the ground that communicate in real time. When a bunny is struck, a drone is automatically deployed to tag the snake with a GPS tracker. We are moving towards an autonomous battlefield where machines hunt machines. The Everglades is becoming a testing ground for the future of robotic environmental management, a smart swamp. As we replace nature with silicon, we must ask, what are we actually saving? If we need a thousand robots to maintain a single acre of wilderness, is it still wild? We are entering an era where human technology is the only thing keeping the natural world from collapsing. The Robobunny is a symbol of our desperation. It shows that we have broken the world so badly that only artificial life can protect what's left of the real one. It's a haunting reflection of our role as gods of a dying planet. Florida's experiment may have attracted something far worse the realization that there is no going back. The super pythons are here to stay, and the robots are just the beginning of our new synthetic relationship with nature. Will we win the war for the Everglades? Or will we just be spectators to a new robotic evolution? Thank you for joining me on this deep dive. Don't forget to subscribe to Onyx Able for more tech nature mysteries. Keep your eyes on the grass, you never know what's watching back.